Hello, this is Chris Neal from South Plains College. Welcome back to my Pro Tools how-to video series, MIDI 1 edition. This video is on basic quantization. In this video, we'll be covering basic grid and groove quantizing. So you will see my shortcuts that I'm using at the bottom of the screen. If you need the conversion to the PC versions, you can find a conversion sheet at the end of the video. For shortcuts, we have one. Option zero is gonna open up your quantized dialog box. So here we are. We're gonna talk about quantization today. We have some tracks left over from the last video. We have the drum part that I entered manually with the pencil tool. I have a bass line that I played in last time, although I re-recorded it to make some slight changes. And then we have a couple of percussion tracks that I recorded in for demoing today. On the bass replaying and both the percussion tracks, I had input quantized turned off, so they are as played. So let's first look at this percussion one track. So I'll go into note view here, and then I'll zoom in so we can kind of see where I played. A little late, a little late, a little early, more early, more early, and so forth. So my timing is, as expected, not so great. So we need to quantize it. So let's open up the quantize window. We can go to event, event operations, and quantize, or option zero. Big fan of the shortcuts, as you know. So here's the quantize window. And quantizing is based on selection. So you either need to click on a clip that you're gonna quantize or highlight the notes that you're gonna quantize. And so I can drag over these notes uh, that I want to quantize. So first we'll do a basic quantization. I'm gonna choose eighth notes because that's what I played. And we're gonna quantize note on. That's where it starts. We're not gonna quantize note off because we don't wanna change the length and we're gonna preserve note duration. Quantizing to eighth note grid. And so we will hit apply, and you might have seen the notes shift a little bit, so let's zoom in and take a closer look. Move the window here, and you can see all the notes lined up perfectly with the grid. So let's undo that. See how, see that's where they were, and then we'll redo, so you can see where they jumped to now that we're zoomed in a little bit. So redo, so you can see how they snapped to the grid. And we'll undo again. All right, now let's look at the strength feature at the bottom of this. And this controls how much the quantization is gonna to pull towards the grid. So at 100%, which is what we basically just did, the notes are pulled perfectly to the grid. If we lower this value, they'll be pulled by that percentage towards the grid. So I'll set it at 50, and we'll see how here's this note then and how far it is away from the grid. And as I apply, you see it moved 50% of the way towards the grid, okay? Now, if, again, if I was 100, it would move right to the grid. So again, strength is a way of keeping some of your feel or how you played. Um, so if I use 75, you see it pulls it m close, really close to the grid, but not exactly. So it still maintains a little bit of how I played it a little bit early, but just not as early as I played it. Okay, looking at this again with strength at 50, here's where the note is, here's the perfect grid. So somewhere in halfway there it should go. So let's apply, and you see it jumps about half the distance. So again, I generally use 60 to 75%, depending on what I'm working on, to leave a little bit of how I actually played it. Okay, let me perfectly quantize this so we can kind of look at swing and so we can see how uh, swing works. So I've perfectly quantized these eighth notes, and now we're gonna look again at how swing affects those notes. So swing works by moving the second of two eighth notes by a certain amount. And you can see how every other eighth note shifted a little bit to the right. So 23%. Okay, so let's see, 50% swing being applied to that shaker. So at 100%, it creates what is called a shuffle. For me, usually I like 10, 20% of swing, but it just depends on what you're working on. So next, let's look at uh, include within and exclude within. We're going to look at perk two. So let me put this into note view. So you can kind of see at the end of bar two and bar four, I 
I threw a little 16th note in there. So it's primarily an eighth note pattern. So let's look at how include within could help with this issue. So let's look at what include within does. So when you're quantizing, Pro Tools is looking at notes around every grid value and it's grabbing notes within a certain range. So we have the grid here and I've highlighted around that grid value. So any notes within this area are gonna be pulled towards the grid. So by lowering the include within value, I'm shrinking that grid, opening up a small little area in between, perfectly in between two eighth notes. And what note value falls perfectly in between two eighth notes? A sixteenth note. So any notes falling within this selected range is what Pro Tools is gonna quantize quantize to that grid value in the middle. So as I lower this, I'm shrinking down that selected area, making it smaller and opening up a gap in between the eighth note grid, which is again where the 16th note would fall. So this one's played pretty badly, so I'd probably have to have that include within down about 75% for it to ignore that 16th note. So with exclude within, what you're doing is opening up a little area around the grid itself. So notes played really close to the grid are ignored. So basically you're saying, hey, if I played it pretty good already, leave it alone, don't quantize it. So I'm opening up an area like I have selected here. So again, that note might fall in that area and therefore it wouldn't quantize that note. So both of these can be used together to exclude notes that fall perfectly in the middle of the grid and excluding notes that are really, really close to the grid already. So let's look at what happens if we uh, quantize with these settings. So I'm gonna select all these notes and I'm gonna apply. And you see how this note was ignored. And if I undo and redo, you can see those notes that are that were quantized, and that one was not. So the value of 85 kind of opened up a 15% window right there in the middle. And you can see how that one was really close to the grid. So based on that 8%, it was also not quantized. So that's a quick little rundown of the include within, exclude within, strength, and swing. So next, let's look at groove quantize really quickly. So with Groove, what you're doing is you're working with an adaptive grid where some notes will fall right where the grid quantization would quantize it, but other notes might be behind the grid or ahead of the grid, but usually behind for a more laid back kind of feel, but it depends on the groove. So I've loaded up a groove here, feel injector eights, and I've got timing selected. And at 100%, it's gonna quantize right to the stored groove. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply at 100%. And you see the notes jump and you see the 16th note disappear because I used an eighth note feel injector. That's okay. Let's zoom in and see and look at these notes. So some of them are on the grid. Some of them are behind the grid, right? There's undo and then redo. Again, they were all perfectly quantized because I left the quantize on. So now if I lower that down, you'll see it, the move towards the groove stored amount, but not uh, as strongly. So you can kind of apply a groove with as much strength as you want. So now let's look at velocity. So the groove also stores velocity for each note value. And uh, if I apply that to 100% to all of these notes, so you can see the velocity that I played them in. So I'm going to choose velocity. I'll leave it at 100 again. And you can see it's a drastic drop in some of the velocities there. So I personally, I rarely like it that much. So I usually drop my velocity down to the 20, 30% area so that it, if I use it at all, uh, so that it will have an effect on the notes, but it won't have such a drastic effect depending on what you're applying it to. And last, and in my opinion, certainly least, let's look at duration. So I'm gonna undo what we've done before here so we can start fresh. And I'm gonna apply this again with duration. So watch these bass notes when I apply this and what happens to the duration. So I rarely want that uh, when I'm applying a groove. So I almost never use duration in, in uh, that scenario. So uh, I'm gonna select all these and apply that. And let's look at one more thing that uh, affects what happens with uh, groove quantization. And that is the pre-quantize function. So if we look at these notes here, 
I applied the groove without pre-quantize on, and so they weren't perfectly lined up with each other. So you can notice here they didn't actually start at the same place before they got pulled to the groove. But if I pre-quantize first, you see how they are perfectly lined up with each other because they both got pulled to the grid and then they both got pulled evenly towards the groove. So if you don't pre-quantize, if the notes started in a separate place, they won't perfectly line up. Now, do you want them perfectly lined up? It depends. So sometimes I'll want to pre-quantize, sometimes I don't. Well, that's the basic grid groove quantize, giving you enough information to make you dangerous. See you next time. Mm -hmm.